Alright everyone, it's time for the occult, video number 277, 1900, The Last President. Uh, this was actually requested in the live stream yesterday by someone who sent in a super chat. Uh, and it's a, it's a good idea, I think, for a video because it is kind of weird. And that's about Ingersoll Lockwood, it, not just the book 1900, The Last President. By the way, my edition is available on Amazon. Apparently it's one of the top 300 books on the entire site, and I didn't even realize it. But there's a link in the description for those of you who want to read it. It's a fairly short read, and if you don't mind just a digital copy, this is a paperback that I sell. If you just want a digital one, you can get it for free. You can go to archive.org and you can look it up there, or just look up Ingersoll Lockwood. Um, it doesn't matter to me whether you're buying one of my copies or not. I appreciate the tip, but if you don't like paperbacks, if you prefer digital, then you can get it there for free. Um, Ingersoll Lockwood is, is, was a very, very strange individual. He appears to have dabbled in the occult while being essentially a Catholic. Uh, and he repeatedly invoked concepts like time travel in his works. In fact, uh, I believe, was it the Laconics of Cult? I believe it was. I can't remember whether it was the Adventures of Little Baron Trump, which there's literally a Trump series <laughs> by Ingersoll Lockwood. Uh, or whether it was Laconics of Cult, which I, I wanted to actually edit and release that. And somebody did send me a good scan, uh, but it was missing a couple of pages, and, and it just the plans fell apart. Some of, some of the pages were messed up. Somebody can probably run one, a copy of that through OCR if they can find one. I don't think there are many copies, though. It doesn't seem he sold many books during his lifetime. But I think his most interesting work, and the reason why I know about him, was a work called 1900, The Last President. Basically, what we're seeing today is what's written about in that book. So invoking the last president, very, very strange. It, essentially, the, the political system is, is fucked up because of a struggle between populists and socialists leading to a constitutional crisis. Now, it's interesting because the Secretary of State is named Pence in this work, not the VP. And so what people joke about, and, and I, I'm, I don't believe in time travel, forward or backward, so I, this is a joke, uh, is that he traveled back in time, I mean forward in time, and saw what's happening now, and basically wrote about it. Isn't it the case that there was a, and I think I mentioned this in the forward, I'd have to go back and reread my own forward, I think something similar happened with the USS Titanic, <laughs> which is interesting. Uh, but all of his works have occult overtones, frequently mentioned like Pence and Trump and stuff like that. Definitely a political bent here, and then he's, you know, talking about, I guess, dabbling with magic of some sort or another. And so people think it's kind of mimetic. And I write about it actually in my foreword in this work from that particular perspective as an occultist who's, who acknowledges the power of mimetics, even if you look at it in, in a secular sense. Um, it is strange. I don't believe the occult in part, and I've explained this before, in some cases is about looking at places where inordinate numbers of thing ha uh, things happen to intersect and overlap, and then looking into the deeper meaning of that overlap. Uh, so when I see this many things by one person that appear to correlate with the same very short period of time that the person in, in mundane secular explanations could never have known of, uh, like, he, like, like secular science has no place for someone uh, telling the future with a crystal ball or seeing it in a lucid dream, when I see that number of connections uh, is quite high, uh, and I acknowledge that this person had at least tangential connections to occultism in his age, uh, I, I give that some importance. I claim it to be mimetic. I claim it to be beyond the realm of, of coincidence as it would generally be thought of. Now, it is a good work, too. It's, I mean, it's fairly short, but it does tell a good story. It's entertaining as a short read. Uh, I can't remember exactly how many pages it was. And some people were actually complaining about on the ratings, they're like, well, this has been edited. I can't vouch for it being uh, authentic, like, like that I didn't put things in by myself or something. You can compare it to the original. It's right online. Go ahead. Get, you can get a KDP or a paperback copy, and you can look. Uh, it's verbatim. I decided to leave it that way. The only thing I did is clean it up. I think there were a couple of grammatical errors, and then I added a foreword explaining why I'm bothering to edit this work, which technically on the nose is not a cult, which is most of the works I release. Uh, it's become, uh, I think, my second best uh, seller now, over the last few weeks mostly, uh, of, of the entire literary career I've embarked on. I think the Book of Forbidden Knowledge has sold more copies, but it's not as high in rankings anyway. I think, the, I think the rankings are based on, like, the most recent month or something. I don't think it's based on all time. Uh, but it has been fairly popular. I sell multiple copies each week, usually, of it. Um, based on the number of ratings, it, if you look at an Amazon work, trust me, if an Amazon work has more than 50 or 60 ratings, it's, it's bringing in quite a few copies. 
Um, that's basically the standard there. In fact, if it has any ratings, half the stuff on the site that's self-published, whether it's edited or authored, they'll never get a rating. Uh, a lot of times people do that, and they're, they're basically they're making a few copies, making a limited batch for friends and stuff. Sometimes they publish and they'll take it down. They'll just make like, you know, they'll get, they get a 50 copies of their work. They want it in their little bookstore. They're, it's good. The Amazon, I know some people have a problem with it. Can I just talk about this for a second? I know some people think Amazon's problematic. Like I condemn their, their shelving of parlor. Um, I, I don't necessarily like all the decisions that they've made. It is still largely helpful for self-publishing, and there really is no alternative, number one. And number two, Bezos has, to his credit, largely stayed above the censorship fray uh, on a level that none of the other big tech firms other than, than Tesla, which isn't involved in the computing world in the same sense, is. Um, Bezos has been the most reluctant to apply it. I think that's because it is entirely a platform. The, the, the idea of MSM content, the, the, the most shady thing Amazon and, uh, delves into is someone will be selling a product and they'll undercut them. <laughs> that's basically it. Uh, but as long as they're getting their slice of the pie, you know, he is hosting the site. But 1900 is a good work. And Ingersoll Lockwood also, he wrote quite a few other works, but some of them are kind of scarce. I think there were a couple of prayer works, uh, some things on, on Catholic um, uh, the theology and a few others he's, he seems to have been relatively religious fairly pious individual so again uh, I do have a link in the description to my edition of that work if you don't mind just a digital copy though you, you can get that for free you just have to look it up uh, look it up and then archive.org and you'll find it there fairly small file it's it's not a very long work that's about all peace out